In this video, we describe the concept of activation control and diffusion control in a chemical reaction. All right, so it's uh, right here a uh, reaction scheme in which two reagents A and B react to generate a reaction complex AB. And then this AB, which is an intermediate, reacts in a second step to generate products. This reaction mechanism is very simple to uh, the one that we have used to describe the pre-equilibrium, in which you, we simply use here uh, C. Okay, uh, but we're using AB in this case just to emphasize that the first step is simply the association of A and B. No chemical reaction takes place. It's just simply uh, a weak interaction between the A and B uh, uh, reagents, and then that A and B complex, which is held together by again weak interactions, maybe hydrogen bond, maybe. Uh, electrostatic interactions, okay, that is the one that reacts to the uh, yield products. Okay, and a different, uh, different explanation would be to uh, assume that A is in solution surrounded by solvent, uh, which organizes in a cage, you know, okay, and then B has also a solvent shell, and then simply the first step would be the association of these two species under a unique solvation sphere right here. And again, the interaction between those two species is not a covalent bond, it's going to be something fairly weak. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, we're going to try to uh, carry out an analysis of this uh, reaction rate. Okay. The rate constants are going to be called K sub D, K sub D prime for the reverse process, and then K sub A for the uh, rate constant of the second step. Uh, the goal is to calculate what the rate uh, law for product formation would be. Right? A product is only formed in the second step. Okay, and then the rate V is simply going to be equal to K sub A concentration of A B. All right, so uh, this is not a legit uh, rate law because that has a dependence on the concentration of the intermediate A B, and intermediates cannot appear in the rate law. Right, so the question is, what are what are we going to do uh, about this concentration so that we can replace it and put it as a function of maybe the concentration of reagents, maybe products, uh, and so forth. Uh, the approximation that we're going to take here is uh, to assume that this uh, intermediate AB reaches steady state. Okay, so that will be the steady the state. We're going to invoke the steady state approximation for AB. All right, so remember that the steady state approximation says that after some induction period, it turns out that this intermediate AB, uh, when it reaches steady state, the concentration doesn't change as a function of time. This is zero, and that can only happen if the rate of the reactions that are forming the intermediate is identical to the rate of the reactions that are removing, or that is removing uh, uh, AB from the reaction medium. Okay, so uh, let's look at this scheme and analyze what is the rate of the reactions that are producing uh, AB and those that are remo removing AB from the uh, mixture. All right, so there's only one reaction that generates AB, and that is A reacting with B through rate constant K sub D. So the rate for that reaction is simply going to be K sub D concentration of A, concentration of B. Right? That is the rate of all of the reactions that are producing A, B. And then this has to be identical to the rate of all of the reactions that are removing uh, A, B. Right? So there are two reactions that are removing uh, A, B. The first one is A, B uh, reacting to generate products, and the rate uh, for that reaction will be K sub A, concentration of A, B. And the other reaction that is removing AB from the reaction mixture would be AB uh, back, dissociation, back dissociating to A plus B. And the rate for that reaction would be KB prime, concentration of AB. Okay, so what we're going to do is solve this expression for AB, and that will give us a convenient uh, uh, formula to be able to uh, replace it here with AB and find what their overall rate law is. Okay, so solving that expression for AB would be as follows. The concentration of AB is going to be equal to K sub D, concentration of A times concentration of B, over uh, K sub A plus K sub D prime. Alright, so we take this expression and plug it here into the rate law, and that is going to yield K sub A, K sub D, over K sub A, plus K sub D prime, multiplying the concentration of reagents. Concentration of A times concentration of B. Right, so that will be our uh, overall uh, rate law for the reaction. 
K node is that it depends on all of the read constants uh, that are in, uh, intervening into, into the process. Uh, so what we're going to do, let me erase here the steady state approximation for AB, is try to examine uh, uh, this rate law under a couple of uh, limits. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is draw an energy diagram for this reaction scheme. Okay, so this is energy, something that we call the reaction coordinate. Right, and we're going to have three points along the coordinate. First is going to be reagents, A plus B. Then we're going to have the intermediate, A B. And then we'll have, we'll have products. Okay, so that will be A B, A plus B, A sub B, and then products. And now, uh, the energy diagram will be like this for the reaction uh, A plus B to give A B, and then you'll have something like this for products, perhaps. So we're going to uh, carry out here a couple of, uh, examine this under a couple of limits. The first limit is that uh, this second step, which is A B uh, reacting to new products, okay, the activation energy for that step, the barrier, is very, very low. Okay? Okay, this barrier is much lower than the barrier for AB to return back to reagents. If that's the case, under these circumstances, what we'll have is that K sub A, which is the rate constant that uh, is responsible for this step, is actually much, much, much greater than K sub B prime. Okay, which is the rate constant that is responsible for AB by dissociating uh, uh, to A plus B. Okay, that will be uh, this energy diagram. Well, so let's see what happens under this approximation. We come to this uh, expression, and notice that in the denominator, uh, we can actually neglect k, uh, k sub b prime with respect to k sub a. Okay, so under those conditions, we find that uh, the rate is simply going to be equal to k sub a, k sub d, concentration of a, concentration of b, over, again, notice that if k sub a is much, much greater than k sub d, then what will happen is that in the denominator, you simply can write k sub a. Okay? Uh, of course, these two things are going to cancel, these two rate constants will cancel, and your overall rate law okay, is going to be uh, this. Okay? Something interesting happens here, and that is that the rate for the overall reaction for product formation only depends on this rate constant, which is simply the, the rate constant that controls the association of A plus B. Okay, so it turns out that that process of A moving through solution to uh, uh, encounter B and then form an addict, that is actually usually uh, controlled by the diffusion of A and B through the solvent. Okay, so this is something that we call diffusion control. Again, the concept here is that you're not forming a, a, a covalent bond between A and B. Instead, you're simply just, uh, that it, this uh, first step is just, again, the diffusion of A and B through solution until they find each other and they form an addict. Okay? And it turns out that diffusion is simply controlled by the properties of the solvent. For example, uh, if you have something that, a solvent that has low viscosity, then A and B can move really fast and find each other soon. Uh, but if, if uh, the solvent has a high viscosity, then the diffusion will be much more slow. Uh, and then the rate constant will go down. Okay, so that's the case for diffusion control. All right, uh, but th that is just one of the limits that we are uh, interested in studying. And the other limit, of course, is that in which uh, we actually have a reaction mechanism in which this second step has a much higher barrier than the first step. And that would mean that the rate constant for the second step, which is K sub A, is actually much, much, much smaller. Okay, the reactivity is very low, so the rate constant is very, very low. Okay, compared to K sub D prime. Okay, so under this case, we would actually be uh, in the other scenario. K sub A is much, much smaller than K sub D prime. Okay, and then we can go back to the overall rate law and see what it transforms into. Okay, you'll have that uh, B, the rate is going to be equal to K sub A, K sub D over. In the denominator, what will happen here is that uh, you will be able to neglect K sub A with respect to K sub D prime. And uh, the result is simply K sub D prime multiplied by A and B. Okay? This is what we call activation control. Okay? Activation control, because this rate depends on uh, the second step 
okay, which is uh, the one that we call the activated process, where the reaction really takes place. Okay? So that is the difference between diffusion control and activation control. Well, it turns out uh, the diffusion control will be very useful in when we study enzyme substrate uh, reactions. Okay, there are some enzymes that have evolved so much uh, so that uh, the barrier for the uh, reaction, which will be this one, okay, after years and millennia of evolution, uh, you actually are reaching close to diffusion control so that those enzymes are so good that the rate of the reaction does not depend uh, uh, on the reaction per se, but only how fast uh, the enzyme and the substrate can diffuse through solution and find each other. Once the enzyme and the substrate complex is formed, then the reaction will be automatic. There's no problems with that. Okay? And it also is interesting, this diffusion control is interesting because if it only depends, uh, it only depends on the uh, properties of the solvent and the temperature. Okay? So we can actually uh, come up with an expression which we're not going to derive. But it's a very simple one. It actually allows you to calculate exactly what this case of D will be Again, only depending on the properties of the solvent and on the temperature. Okay, so uh, this will be 8RT over 3 eta. Okay, where this is the temperature, and this is what we call the viscosity of the solvent. Okay, that eta is called the viscosity of the solvent. Okay, so this should make sense. Notice that if you elevate the temperature, then what happens is that the A and B can diffuse faster through solution. Right? If they diffuse faster, they have a, a bigger chance of encountering each other and then reacting. Okay? So there should be a linear, uh, at least a, a positive correlation between the temperature and the rate constant. Okay? Now, notice that the rate constant depends inversely on the viscosity of the solvent. Right? So if you have a very, very viscous solvent, like, uh, for example, molasses, okay, what will happen is that the diffusion of A and B through, through that solution will be very, very slow and then the reactivity will be low as well. Okay, so again, what should happen is that the viscosity should be inversely correlated to the uh, uh, diffusion uh, uh, coefficient here, the diffusion constant, all right? And that's exactly what you see in this expression. All right, so this is a uh, uh, discussion of diffusion control versus activation control. This will be important when we study enzyme subject uh, uh, reactions. And then uh, finally, we actually have a very simple expression to calculate what the rate constant for diffusion control would be. Okay, uh, when we are in water, uh, uh, no, not in water, uh, but when we actually have uh, 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 dilute solutions. Okay, uh, this expression will work for, work for water or for any other solvent, as long as the solutions are dilute, so you don't have a very high concentration of A and B, and you know the viscosity of the solvent, right? So the viscosity of ethanol, will be different from that of methanol, from acid or nitro, from water. Okay, you can actually in principle do this for every single solvent as long as you know what the viscosity is.